All right, everyone. Welcome back to the 580 Show, episode 172. I'm here with the Olympic City boys. What's up, guys? Going on. Here. They're back in Western PA where they belong. Um, but yeah, plan for plan for this episode is just to talk to Gus Kacharski Frawley about how everything went. Um, they obviously competed last weekend at the Olympic City Pro Am. So I watched the whole thing start to finish, like of your guys' show. I thought the pace of it was awesome from a spectator from home because I was able to watch like what I guess you guys had like roughly 20 and then the middleweights had eight and then the women had four. So like a little over 30 people in yep. what, four and a half hours start to finish. Something like that. Yeah. Very so it was cool. Movie Ram. Yeah. And I actually was talking shit on the live stream at first. And then I realized it was my Wi-Fi that was making it choppy. So, <laughs> Because I, I switched over, I switched over to another device and it was like as smooth as could be. So, uh, so yeah, that's awesome. But, uh, first event at the Olympic City Pro. And first up, how was the like, I don't know, talk about your guys' trip. I heard Frawley told me you guys didn't have heat in your Airbnb. We didn't have heat in our Airbnb. No, we might have stayed, stayed in the worst Airbnb in the history of Airbnbs. We got catfished. The heat. The guy that we got it from definitely took the real estate pictures from when he bought the house <laughs> and then just changed everything out. The microwave was different. The oven was different. The couches were different. There were no curtains on the blinds, so you could just see through the house. Hell, in one window, <laughs> didn't even have blinds. Do you guys leave bad like review? Home. We're good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should. Dude, that happened to me in Columbus like – Legit looked like one of the nicest Airbnbs I've ever seen on the thing. And then I got there and there's ants everywhere and heroin needles in the front yard. And it was, we were going to, we were going to cook out in the grill in the backyard. And the day we get there, we check out the grill. It has all the grates are torn out of it and thrown on the ground and it's filled with garbage. The tank isn't attached to the, like, isn't on the grill. Like it's it, it, the hose connection was. Yeah, but it was like not under the grill. It was it was the worst Airbnb. The hot tub didn't work. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what are the like, Don't ever say it. No, 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 no! Don't. Do yeah, that. we're doing no. that. No. Yeah, we are. No, don't ever stay there. We can't. We can't talk. Don't, don't, don't stay there. there. Don't oh. stay there. <laughs> I'm gonna have Dante beep that out. No, <laughs> we're gonna get countersued. <laughs> If you want to know the yeah, address, you let code. me know, and I will tell you. All right. Yeah, there you go. That Exactly. I mean the DM. Yeah. If you're ever no going problem. to Colorado Springs, consult with these guys before you go, and then, yeah. But uh, how was how was the venue? Great. Yeah? It was good. It was good. There was a lot of room. Yeah, yeah no complaints, really. Athlete accommodations were, like, what was your guys, like, warm-up stuff like and, and everything like that? I mean, there was a lot of warm-up stuff, I thought. Like, everything you'd need, need to be ready. And I felt like there was enough time to warm up. It wasn't like I felt really rushed or, or like we I was fighting entire, other people. We had an entire staff helping us in the weight room. Like, organizing, organizing the weights, organizing, like, yoke heights, farmer heights, farmer handles being set up. Um, you know, communicating what the weights were on different implements, like it was, it was seriously awesome. Yeah, like, that was like fighting the athletes on what they're opening with, so we didn't have to like keep a close eye on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it, it definitely showed. It definitely showed because, like I said, how it ran. I mean, uh, start to finish under four, under five hours. So that's cool. The Um, so how was, so the first event, I just paused it and I'll have Dante at, I'll have Dante piece these two together. But, um, so the first event was log. Yep. And our boy Gus, he almost, he took a crack at the 400. Yeah. It was one, th one thing I did think was weird was no split times for the log ladder. Um, but. That's in the rule. Like, I mean, it's at the promoter's discretion, obviously. Right. And you could definitely see people. You could tell what events there were split times, what events there weren't split times because how people were gaming it. 
Um, but I believe you guys correct me, but your logs were what 300, 350, and 400, right? No, no. 330, 375, right. 400. Okay. Uh, I was yeah. off. 330, yep. 370. Oh, yeah, because I – yeah, okay. Yeah, I screwed that up. Yeah, 330, 375, and 400. Yep, okay. yep. And um, for quite a while, there was a huge holdup on hitting that second log. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, like, people people getting the second log, and Gus came through and, and smoked it. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the dog in them. How did the different logs feel? Because uh, one of them was wooden. The last one was wooden, right? Yeah, the Gus first, is the only one that touched it. Gus, two, yeah, the first two were fine. Like the pit bull was no problem. The then Bartos log, which we all used, and then I think I was the only one who actually touched the four hundred in warm ups just to get a feel for it. I just picked it, dead deadlifted it up, didn't clean it or anything, but I could tell right away. It was like it felt like it was like 10, 15 pounds heavier on the left side. So oh. it it I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It felt a little funky, but once it was on my chest, it felt pressable, but no. You know what's funny? They no actually way. they actually called you out on the live stream for warming up super heavy. Like I think <laughs> I think CJ said it. He's yeah, like, CJ mentioned that. Yeah. That's yeah. cool though. What so I mean, I thought that was a really cool event. Um for a while, you guys were like, could see the middleweights next to you. So you kind of always had action going on. Like, even if someone kind of like only got the first log, but then the person next to him was a good presser, stuff like that. That's what I was telling Frawley this week. That's one thing I thought was really cool was your guys' class, there was really no like dead weight at all, where everyone kind of had their moments. And like, even if a guy did bad on log, he would, he did like insane on the next event. And it was just always kind of like, someone coming through and having like that shining moment on it. And it was just a thought it was just a really even show. Like across. We talked about that too, like getting ready during prep, like people that were good at overhead, weren't as good at deadlift. People that were good at deadlift, weren't as good at overhead. There were obviously some exceptions to that, but it was just kind of a general rule. And um, yeah, you could kind of tell like some people were really good at some events. Some people weren't so good at some events. So, um, so, the second event was the Max Axle. Yeah. What, what kind of axle did you guys use? Do you know the brand? It was like a 10 foot pipe. Oh, really? Yeah. Just a. Yeah, it was like axles like are all over the place. So, you know. Yeah. It was, was like a 10 foot, two inch steel pipe. It didn't, it didn't feel weird or anything. It just no. felt like an axle, but it was long. Yeah. So. No, you, you guys all three did really well in that event. Gus, I saw they said no thumbs or you had to have your thumbs around the bar. So that obviously changes well, the way you pull. Well, that's what we thought, but you uh, watch videos back and you see people had their thumbs false grip yeah. over the top. And I was told specifically that like, it had to be wrapped around like the ref grabbed my arm and was like, grab the bar like this. So I was like, all right, I'll do that. I don't think it, it didn't change anything. It was just something I had to think about going into it. Cause as I pull my, straps kind of slide down so it was something i had to keep in mind after that but i don't think i would have pulled any more doing it any other way yeah Yeah, i mean you still had a pr how many pounds was that pr 20 like 20 something i don't know because the bar toast is like 68 pounds so it's something like that yeah how did how did that um how did that setup feel Cause it was like, you know, it was a nine inch deadlift, but you guys were standing on the thing so you could have yeah. the, the cooler, you know, setup and stuff. How did it feel? It was stable. I felt stable up there and not off balance or anything. The only thing that happened to the implement, well, I think was like, I think it happened to me on the first deadlift, the right tire blew and you could just hear the air hissing out of it oh, the really? whole time as every person was coming up. Yeah. The right tire was hissing air. I mean, everybody had to deal with it, but yeah, yeah, it did a little bit. So it made it a little bit challenging off the bottom. But I would say with the tires being on, like being on the tires actually helped a little bit off the ground because it gave you just a little bit of a bounce, right? Rather than like uh, having having plates on the ground, there's no give with that, right? Yeah, that makes Whereas sense. the tire had a little bit, a little bit more. 
So if you could kind of game it right, you could use it to your advantage. Almost like slap. It was almost like slap. Yeah, like, a little you know, bit, right? Yeah, yeah. I, that make that makes sense. Honestly, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. makes sense. That's like That's uh, a, I've got like Gus. You know those plates that your coat Petro has at his gym with the yeah. Inch? That's the yeah, hardest plates. Ever. Yeah, those yeah. are so could now I could never. Those are like super heavy and condensed. So this is like the opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get what you're saying, Philly. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Yeah, Goliath, Greek Goliath, and uh, Mark Sanchez tied up for the win on that event. Yeah, they both pulled eight seventy five. Eight seventy five. That was cool. It's pretty gnarly, I, dude. That's 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 insane. What that's is, like what the hardest deadlift like? you can get, right? Like, and they're pulling almost nine hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you know, that's you pretty pulled, crazy. You pulled seven seventy five. Yeah. Uh, uh, Frawley pulled seven fifteen. Yeah. Kucharski pulled six ninety five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me talk about it. <laughs> but but for all you, so for all you went seven fifty. It, it seemed like you could take. Now how how were they how are they gaming jumps? Because twenty pound jumps. Twenty. It had to be yeah. twenty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you could skip jumps if you wanted to. You could skip jumps, but it and was twenty went, pounds to the next weight. And what did you miss? 7.55. Okay, I thought so, because I was yeah. going to say, you skipped 7.35, which I think, yeah. looking at your 7.55, I thought you had 7.35 for sure. Yeah, I mean, but, but the whole reason I took it was to try to get a five-pound PR. Oh, no, so, right. I 100% get like, it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Looking back, I'm like, man, I wish I would have just taken that, but yeah, that's why I did what I did, so... I forgot to even I forgot to mention even that, because um, we were talking about it right before the episode, but you... you messed up a finger right before the show yeah i dislocated my fingers warming up for log yeah these two so all five all five events with that we'll talk about we'll talk about gus too i think gus got banged up on the next event right uh with yeah Theo. that go crush my soul dude this that show this show was so one thing i loved about it was the events we talked about for all on the pod but the events were good they were just like classic strongman events and it was yep. so heavy mm -hmm. like it was a really, it was a really cool pro am. So, was there anything else I skipped over with the deadlift that kind of like, like stood out? Anything that I mean, I looking at the scores from what I remember, you kind of you had to get to the seven seventy five. That was the mark that everybody was pulling to get some actual points. Um, so sure. like even if I would have hit the seven fifty five, I would have only gained I think one point just yeah. for getting one more jump. So it just kind of showed you where like the the meat of the crowd was, right? The average of the crowd and where where of the field and where you need to be. So I definitely took note of that. So yeah, there were seven guys that pulled seven seventy five. Yeah, that was the number. Like there's always in the classes you always see the number. That was the one for this one. So right, hundred percent. Yeah. So then you guys did yoke, and it uh -huh. was that was fifty foot, right? Yep. Uh, and it was a thousand pound yoke, so that's yep. obviously a huge number. Probably we were getting hyped for you because you were the first athlete to go to not drop the yeah yoke. That was my goal. That was my only goal for the yoke run. Was I just wanted to run? I wasn't trying to be fast. I mean, CJ noted that on the live stream. I was not trying to run quickly. I was trying to run steadily and not drop it, so that I didn't have to spend time picking it again. And yeah. then you run the risk of the slides and et cetera. So I just, I wanted to run one clean run and that was it. So I was really happy with that. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You were in first for a while on that event. You ended up getting yeah. third overall. Yep. What did, what did that yoke feel like for you guys? Cause it was a unique yoke and I think they were saying it was custom built, right? Yeah, uh, it was, they were elite FPS yokes. Oh, were they? Yeah. Oh, that's yep. cool. They came I've, never, I've never seen those elite FTS yokes in a comp. Yeah. And I know they have a thinner bar, right? Gus didn't like them. Yeah, it was like it was like having an axle on your back versus yeah. like whatever a usual yoke is, like a yeah, three like a four inch, inch or whatever. Yeah, whatever. But it didn't feel like it was going to move or go anywhere. That's what it I like. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was on, on the normal yoke, though. Yeah, it yeah. did feel different when it was on my back. It felt like it settled nicely into the spot that I wanted it. Did you it guys was never really tight them too? Yeah, did you know? Wait, what did you say, Gus? It was wider. It was, it was wider than oh, the significantly, significantly yeah. wider. Yeah, I mean, for the short guys, it worked against them, but those tall guys, like having the wingspan, be able to hold it, it was really yeah. comfortable. It didn't like put a lot of pressure on your front delts or anything. That's totally cool. agree. 
So not to, uh, this is like in the weeds, dorky stuff, but did, did it feel different with like the weight on the sides versus like when you'd run a, tr like say the yokes we have at 580, like the Madewell and like the Titan yokes. Yeah. Did, did it feel different? Like the weight distribution? Did that, did that feel like a swing from a cambered bar or anything like that? Or did it just was like, ah, it was a yoke. I think it did a little bit, not quite mm -hmm. like as bad as a camber bar would have been, but I definitely noticed a little bit more forward and back than yeah, I would have on like a four corner yoke. Yeah. I, I mean, can't say that I noticed truthfully. I was going to say it was a thousand pounds. I wasn't really trying to think. Yeah, yeah. it was heavy. <laughs> I mean, it still felt like there was a thousand pounds on my back. Right. I can say that for sure. A thousand yeah. pounds is a whole new world. Yeah. And Kucharski had a hell of a run too. Yeah, until I dropped it. I was watching the video today, reliving my horror. <laughs> right when I dropped it, I was at ten seconds, like five feet away from I know the line, and then I had to repick it twice. And they hit me with like two penalty slides. Okay, I'm okay. glad you said that. What was, what was? I'm sure they talked about it in the rules for you guys, but on the live stream, it wasn't that clear, like what the drop penalty actually was. Two but seconds guys, per slide. Two seconds per yeah. slide. So even if like you hit and you're moving, that's a slide penalty. And oh, they told really? us they told us it was going to be strict. I mean, well, they, they were hammering, us. they were yeah. hammering everyone with it. Yeah. So well, I mean, yeah. if you sure. What's that? I just said, yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah, well, like, yeah, because because Kachor, I was surprised because Kacharski had a really good run until he didn't when he was like five feet away, and right. then his time was like twenty four seconds, mm -hmm. and I was yeah like. I crossed the line, and in my video, I crossed the line at like 19 seconds. Oh, really? So. Yeah, so. Yeah. Two draws. I was like blown away. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if there's a drop penalty, whatever, there's, you know, right. the drop penalty. Gus, you got you got banged up on that event. What yeah. happened? Like, what when you were running, I'm curious. I think after every repick, I think I was rushing too much. And it, at one point, I've repicked and it was too low on my back. And I felt like I was trying to push the yoke forward with my arms more than you probably should when it's a thousand pounds. And I just, I don't know if I was straining hard, but yeah. it felt like my arms were being pulled off. That, and then every repick, it felt like I was just being crushed. I yeah. still haven't fully recovered from that. My back feels like it just needs pulled. How many times did you pick it during that run? Like four, five. It had to be four. It had to be four or five. Yeah, five hundred. <laughs> Gus picked it a lot of times. I felt yeah. like I was determined to finish, but I think that what? cost me more than it did anything else. I'm thinking too the wider the wider posts on the side probably were but when you're pushing forward with your arms, that's putting that extra strain because it's out farther. Whereas yeah. normally you would have your support of your delt, your pec, your upper shoulder, etc., pushing on that. And when it's out farther, you know, your forearms are probably taking the brunt of it. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of there makes were, sense. There were some guys, like even in the light, or uh, not the lightweights, but the middleweights, Middle there were there were people that legitimately picked it 15 times. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. I could just see them getting shorter. <laughs> that wasn't a light <laughs> yoke for the middleweights. What did they do, like yeah. nine something? It was 900. Yeah. Well, it was, yeah. a, it was a heavy show for those guys. Yeah, yeah. It was a heavy show. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, the yoke was cool. Um, mm -hmm. and then Kacharsi comes out on Farmers and freaking seals the show. My internet. So only part of the show I didn't get to watch live. I'm not joking. Four and a half hours. I didn't <laughs> get to watch two minutes because my computer was plugged into my TV and died. And then I ran and plugged it in. It was Kacharsky's freaking Farmers. Yeah, uh, and so I, I, all, the live stream you can, the live stream you, no, the live stream you can move around. So I got to see it still, but I literally like, if you finished and then the next flight was up when my computer died, and then I start, I refresh and I'm like, oh my god, Kacharski just won that event. Yeah, I was filling in so yeah. many people because people were out and about and stuff and weren't watching live, and I was, yeah, how the yeah, slide penalty on that one too. Did you? Yeah, he did get a slide yeah. penalty on that one. He still like literally it. 15 feet out. <laughs> the implement, the handle slid out of like my where I wanted it to be down into my fingertips. I'm like, I gotta make it to that finish yeah. line because if it falls, it's it's gonna flip. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, like put it 
switched in the gear and got there. And as soon as it was coming across the line, it dropped out of my hand. Both the judges looked at each other, and I looked at them and said, I'm getting a slap penalty, aren't I? They're like, yeah. I was like, Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at myself. Don't yeah. sorry. sorry. <laughs> what was your guys' weight again? 350. 350. 350. Okay. Did, did something change with the rules, or did I not understand the rules correctly with the one drop they thing? It. They, changed they changed it. it. Okay. Because they, got- they told us they wanted people to finish. They're like, we want you to finish. We realize this is going to be challenging, so we're not going to. We're not going to punish you for multiple drops. Yeah, so, no, I yeah, yeah. stuff that changes. Was what we I were just all training for because I remember you guys talking about it in yeah. training with the no. Same drop. with the yoke. The yoke was only supposed to be one drop, but they oh, were like, really? you know what? Yeah, we're just we're going to let you go. Like three weeks out too, because I I messaged him when I dropped my first yoke in practice. Yeah, yeah, but no. it, it, I felt like it worked out. Um, the farmer's handles, obviously, my hand didn't help me, but. The farmer sandals themselves, they were Titan farmers. And did you guys notice the handles could roll? Rotate a little bit. Yeah, yeah they were so. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. play back and forth. That didn't help. <laughs> that didn't help yeah. either. But I mean, it is what it is. The, I think the bar was a little bit thicker too. Just a little bit thicker than the Bartos, which uh, made it a little bit different. Than Bartos for sure, too. They were what? The height pick? That lower pick. Lower yeah. pick. Yeah, the height pick was definitely like yeah. a little bit lower, but not by much. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't – I didn't notice a huge difference, but it was different is what I would say. Um, but, yeah, it, it just – I mean, it sucks. Yeah. Trying to hold on to something with broken fingers isn't very fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so strong, man. you winning that event was so awesome, though. That's just crazy. It was awesome. You had yeah. Gus. Gus got second on the first – it was like a day of just highs because – on the first event, Gus tied for second. First. Or f- no. On the log. Yeah, Nobody tied for first. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you tied for first. Yeah. Yeah. And then Frawley had the yoke run, and then Kacharski had the farmers. I was mm-hmm. like, it was just I was just sitting here like a proud dad, just yeah, it was away. awesome. It was it was awesome. It was a special then, moment. Yeah. You sure are special, buddy. Oh, yeah, it was real special beating somebody in three events. I ain't going to say any names. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Prize of Goliath. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the, the last event was, I thought, was the one that stole the show. Like The stone event. I thought the Twin Peaks was, like, a cool idea. Or what, awesome. is that what it's called? Twin Peaks? Yeah, Pike's Pike Peak. Peak. Yeah, Pike, Pike's Twin Peaks is the one where the girls dress like. Yeah. Got a, re- a lot of relation to the end of the story, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the 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 peaks the Pike Peak Stone Pike's Peak yeah. Stone the stones were like redone resealed best like stones I've ever used looked like yeah. looked like Target stone like the yeah. ball outside of Target <laughs> it was just and like people were getting so hype I don't know if you guys really got to like comprehend the the middleweights. Yeah, what was happening with them because they had it was basically winner takes all between yeah. first, second, and I believe third for stones. And then the guy that was in third came and like had an awesome run and forced a hand. And then the guy in second came and had a good run. And then our boy Chris Otero, who Chris, won yep. um, the show, he came out and blew it out of the water. It was just like. CJ Krause was doing an awesome job commentating it, and it was yeah. like a super, super close event. And then those guys had to do a tiebreaker too. For it was a cool tiebreaker, I thought, because it was for actual money. Like yeah. I they were like, this is like the difference of like five hundred dollars or something, you know? Like yeah. that's cool. They did what they do, single arm farmer holding. Single right? arm farmer spacing. Yeah. That's cool. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Uh Ooh, those stones are the best stones I've ever used for sure. Yeah, and you they could tell awesome. because your guys' performance, like not trying yeah. to chirp, but like yeah, you definitely I mean, I thought like the performance is I mean, for you, Frawley, because I know your stones well. Kacharski thinks he can load a four hundred stone, and it's like three twenty, but whatever. But <laughs> but no, you guys did awesome. Like Gus obviously yeah, forearm you. was <laughs> Gus's forearm was uh was uh you know acting up. So I felt like they were being pulled off my body. That night could, the tack wasn't sticking either. Oh, you could, excuses, excuses, Gus. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. No, you could tell, like, I was just, like, kind of screaming at you to stop because I didn't want to see you tear something. 
That's like, what I, I if I said that if the tacky would have stuck, I think I would have torn something. Yeah, so it might be it's a blessing in disguise that it didn't. But no, you guys, people were moving through those stones. Yeah. I mean, moving. Sure. So stones were probably rattle off the stone weights. 300, 330, 350, 400, 440. And then it went, you know, it got worked its way up yeah, and high and then worked its way 48, down. 48, 50, 55, 46, 42. I, I thought, think. Pretty I thought the that. 55 was going to give people the most problems in your guys' class. Yeah, we're all tall, though. Yeah, that's the thing. You know. Man, people were just like, Matt Webb was one. Matt Webb won motion. Matt Webb was a dog, the old man. Strange. He won the event. Yeah, he yeah. won that event. I don't know if you can hear it on the live stream, but after the event, he, he threw his hands out to the side, says, who's going to beat the old man? Yeah. Like, that he, was awesome. He, was I, awesome. You, you couldn't hear it on the live stream, yeah. but he posted it, and yeah. I thought that was sweet. It was awesome. There was just so many, so many good performances. I was kind of kind of heartbroken for Mark Sanchez without ever knowing yeah. or meeting the guy. I felt sad because the – I can't remember what he said about – do you guys remember what he said about the tacky? Like whether he wasn't familiar with it or used a different no, kind or bored by it because I talked to him right before we went up. I said, "Dude, you don't got any tacky on." He's like, "This is all I need." He's like, "This is the best tacky in the game." I forget the brand he said. Oh okay. no, no, no! Don't call out brands. Don't. don't, yeah. <laughs> don't That's don't. why I said I forget the brand he said. Okay. Come yeah. on, man! All all right, not right. new to I, just, the I just remember. I remember talking to him. He just it, he he was really frustrated with the tacky situation because that was pretty much what it. Whatever happened with it is what caused the problem. You could tell and talk because he was cleaning up when we were, and then he said the same thing. So, I mean, at least he still hit podium. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But, um, CJ, CJ Allen, um, who I've met yeah. with before, he snuck in the win, man. That was awesome. Yep. Congrats to him. But there was just so many. Like, if you go down the list, like Josh Hatfield was consistent all day, pretty yep. much. Like, Look, and then uh, Mark Sanchez had the had the lead the whole day. Had that real big deadlift. Same with Greek Goliath. Matt Webb won the stones. Gabe Ping has been a world's strongest man. So it was just like, Katar, yeah. you guys were a place and two places behind Gabe Pena. Like that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I was in fifth uh, going into the last event, and then Ferrelli came up to me and told me this: what was going on right after the stones? Yeah, because if you had a good if you had a good stone run. It was possible that you could have made it to the podium. Yeah, and, it was a long shot, but it was he had a chance. And Gus and I talked about it too, and we're like, uh, I don't think he knows, and we're not gonna tell him, but we're gonna push him really hard on this event yeah. and see what happens. So <laughs> that's funny. Because well, you, we, you don't we didn't want you to try too hard. We didn't want you to overtry, right? And try to be a hero. Like, dude, just go do a good run. Yeah. And see All where right. the cards fall. So um, yeah, I mean they, it's not out of reach. It could happen. Yeah. So it was, it was fun. There we got experience. It was a good show. Yeah. That's how I look at it. For it sure. was funny. It was funny because CJ Krause thought right. Katarsi was going to pass out on the live stream, but it was just the way you are. Because <laughs> you do you remember you the last? Wasn't it? Wasn't that event that Chad Coy made you try that last stone again? Yeah, I got there. So when I got to that last stone, I barely had any tacky. I picked it. When I tried to, like, reach over to pull it back in, there was no tacky left. Yeah. But I looked at my arms. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like, you got 25 <laughs> seconds left. Get back in there. I'm like, okay, let's give it a whirl, man. <laughs> I'll, try it. Yeah. I'll try it again. <laughs> it was when you were – it was when you are going from the second to last stone to the last stone, and you were, like, doing your thing that I've seen you do in training, but, like oh. – he looks you look like a crazy person and you look like you're gonna pass out and die. And they thought they thought that you were gonna pass out on the live stream. I was like, nah, that's just I think that's just, just how he is. <laughs> but no man, that I mean there's there's a ton of people to highlight. Like I said, Chris Otero, he's like a five eighty show listener, and I met him at Nationals last year and he's an awesome dude. And I was so pumped to see him get the one oh five win too, but for sure. Uh, I think I think like I mean Kacharski just touched on it a little bit, but I think you guys going there as a obviously you guys having each other I think is a really cool thing because I think um it's, it's really unique because you you three all kind of started strongman around the same time too. Gus was doing it way longer, but oh, were uh, you Tyler? And it's good. Sorry, Gus. Tyler and I for sure. Yeah. So. But, 
Well, you guys kind of congregated and then have each other to push, but I think you guys going to the show is like a prime example of like putting yourself in the bigger pond. Like Frawley and I always talk about it, like be this, be the smaller fish in a big pond versus, you know, the, the huge fish in the real small pond, you know, like, yeah. Could you guys have gone to like a local show, you know, an hour from your house and been the top three there no matter what? Yeah. But you guys, Blue, which is like a, probably a huge experience because if you ever like make it to OSG or the Shaw Classic or just a big show, whatever yeah. show pops up, another pro am, you guys are gonna have to fly. So getting that experience, learning how to, and then going against putting yourself like that was a stacked lineup. I don't mm-hmm. think a lot of people know like that was a stacked lineup, <laughs> super well rounded, top to bottom. And you could put the top ten or fifteen in any order, and you'd be like. Yeah, that that could have happened. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So no, it was it was cool. I was proud of you guys. It was yeah, awesome. The flying the flying was definitely a new experience for competing. Um, I mean, I know, I know, I learned from that for sure. Um, I hate flying, and I knew I hated <laughs> flying, but it, like you said, it's going to become a necessity if you continue down the path. So. Um, navigating it is a little bit better now. We know how to do it. Um, you know, so that was good, but the altitude did affect a little, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was the end of the world, but like I was short on air. I mean, I can say that for sure. So I feel like during the events, it didn't really affect me speaking for myself, but like trying to recover, yeah, after getting the, uh, trying to recover in between like yoke and farmers, man, like catch my breath. Like you had to rip your belt off right away. Yeah. There was no like, Oh, we're just going to ease into this. Like, no, you had to get that off. Yeah. So yeah. that was a challenge too. Right. Like there were some good things that we learned. Right. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm really happy for that. The judging was a, a pretty strict standard for the most part. Definitely. Um, and that was like, good. I like, I want that because, I I want to be held to a strict standard to what you can expect at a world show or at a high level show, and I felt like that was consistent the whole way through for the most part. Um, yeah, it, it was your log that I was like, oh, they're gonna judge hard today. Yeah, is that one? Yeah, they told us that. I mean, they told us in the rules, like guys, we're gonna be strict. That's awesome. More than fair. More than fair. Yeah, I, I expected that considering these are the same guys who like judge the Shaw Classic, like, right. which right. is pretty crazy in itself but yeah well that's awesome any any other main takeaways from the trip anything that you guys wanted to talk about i just i want to have you guys on this week because you know fall we've been we're talking about that show a lot and uh you all three went and did a great job so i just wanted to you know everyone yeah, i was really them. proud i was really proud that all three of us finished the show um it was there it was a mental test for sure i mean getting through all five events and like sticking with it like especially gus like can't hold on to farmers can't hold on to stones like it's like I almost, man, after farmers i almost pulled out it that was the first time it's ever crossed my mind to pull yeah. out of a show yeah. yeah and like just finishing a show at that level with those weights and like it, i mean i get you didn't load a stone right i get that but like you still tried so like getting through that is a feat in itself and um you know it was it was awesome like it was great. I, I would tell anybody that wants to go out and do a show out there to find one of Brando's shows because I felt that they did an excellent job. That's great. Very well so, done, put together. All the, all the helpers and like Brando really cared about the athletes and their well being throughout the whole show. Yeah, without a doubt. Seconds. Well, that's great. So, yeah, no, I I hope um I hope it, like they got a lot of buys on the stream too. Like yeah. I hope they got a lot of support because. I, I I love doing I love buying stuff like that because I think that's the way these like pro ams and stuff are gonna keep popping up. Mm-hmm. I see pro ams keep popping up. I saw Levi Strong's running one in mm-hmm. down south September. somewhere. In September. Where Las Vegas. Vegas. La- um Mississippi. And then yeah. what's the Las Vegas one? Uh it's at the end of April, I think. Right, guys? Yeah. End of yeah, April. Like April twenty seventh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So who's running that? Do we know? I'll look. I don't remember. On Iron Podium? It might yeah. be. Did they I don't think it is on Iron Podium. To be no, honest. no, I don't think it is. I know they have a Instagram page. 
with like They're a link some it. other some other platform but what's it, what's it called Los just Las Vegas it's... strongest I think yeah Las Vegas strongest got it yeah but the yeah. events are awesome they're pretty similar to um pretty similar to um Olympic City with a a couple different ones but yeah sub the farmers for a truck pool and I think that's pretty much it the Hummer tire instead of an axle if, 15, Hummer tire deadlift. 15 inch Hummer tire yeah log clean and press each rep yeah truck pool thousand pound yoke and atlas stone series yeah oh, yeah and it's definitely something like in the future i mean i definitely would consider competing in a pro-am again it just costs a lot of money yeah <laughs> well, travel, maybe, we'll, so maybe like, we'll run one that'd be fun that'd be great then i wouldn't cost a lot of money yeah you sleep at your own <laughs> so i wouldn't have to travel it looks like this one too is just heavyweights is it okay? There's no middle weight. I don't. I don't. I might be wrong. I only yeah. see weights. Like each each thing, there's only one weight. So yeah, I know Levi was talking about having a middleweight class for his in September. Um, they were tossing around the idea right now. I think it's just heavyweights. Um, but they were talking about potentially having a middleweight class too. So what? was there an event in Levi's uh, show where you have to pick a sandbag and rent through water and load it like the world's strongest man show? Yeah, like yeah. Sean, Big Z. Yeah. yeah that was one of the events. <laughs> well, that's yeah. awesome. Did any of you guys buy uh, Iron Podium Premium? Any of you dorks? No. So it's no. a, it's a debate. haven't kicked in yet, you know. It's a, it's a debated thing going on in the strongman community right now. That's the only other topic I had. But the only thing I don't like is the leaderboards are only for paying people. So you're only measuring yourself against paying people, but hey, Iron Podium's got to make money. I mean, they probably it's probably their full time job. Here's my thing: How can you measure a leaderboard with all the different events? Like, what are they what? doing? Taking it from like the most wins? Probably just dorky algorithms and stuff. Yeah, just like yeah, deadlift, you know, stuff like that. I think it's a cool idea if they want to keep doing it, but I'm not gonna have it. But yeah, if anyone got Iron Podium, pre Iron Podium. I, Jesus, I can't talk. Iron Poda, po, oh my God, I'm having a Put it out. Let him go. Let him go. He's got to get it right. <clears throat> if anyone has yeah. Iron Poda, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> Iron, I can't say it. I say can't. It. Say it. Come on, Iron Podium Premium. If anyone has that, wow, I'm gonna have my producer. I'm gonna have my producer edit that out Ooh. so I look good, but. <laughs> If Sounds anyone amazing. has that, if anyone has that, comment and let us know what you think of it so far. But, um, yeah, we'll have some guests here in the next couple of weeks. Congrats to the big boys. Make sure you drop a comment. What do you guys call yourselves? The big, Beefy Boys. Beefy boys. Beefy boys. I, I always say Burly Boys accidentally. Beefy Boys. I'm the cover or something. Beefy <laughs> Boys. I got. Beefy I'll. Boys. I'll. I might wear my Frogus Charsky shirt to Strongman Saturday tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> But uh, dude, my girl got a kick out of that, dude. I oh, love that. Yeah. That's fine. But uh, yeah, congrats, guys, and uh, and we'll see everyone next week for episode one seventy three. Sign up for Battle at the Bridge Three. Yeah, sign up. We'll, we'll talk more about it next it. week. Probably dropping out. See you guys. Maybe. <laughs>